now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon Underground Champions League, oh yeah! Puckle! Puckle. Welcome to another episode of the Puckle Podcast. I'm your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my spectacular co-host. We've got the one and only R Sigma. Hello. And we've got Jolly Old Claude Nine. Hello, everyone. Oh my god, now it's so much louder. My thing. Uh <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League. Uh, where we oh, yeah. talk everything Pokemon from the trading card game to the video game to everything in between. I wish I could regale people with Pokemon stories this week like I have been. Like, oh, let's go rant about the trading card game or something. No, no, that's for like three weeks when Dragapult shows up. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So I've been following I've been following like the new set tr- showing up in a few weeks, but like. Oh, I haven't. My honest interest in these past few weeks, uh, one have been the Stardew Valley update. I haven't played Stardew Valley, but I've been getting fed a lot of Stardew Valley videos on youtube and i'm not mad about it it's a fun time it's a, yeah no, it's, it's okay. a good it's okay. everyone goes through that phase i'm gonna play the stardew valley update so i've been doing that uh i've also outside of that uh because it's being getting nice out i built a bar outside last summer to like entertain but also for myself oh okay that's fun so i've been cleaning that up and i'm like oh i want to make some improvements to the bar so i've been working on that as well as uh so like okay i've been getting really into tiki drinks lately. Ooh. What do you mean by really into tiki drinks? I'm very good at making cocktails, Claude. Okay. I am very good at this, and so, like, the next elevation of that, in my opinion, for myself, maybe not for other people, is tiki, uh, which is a group of complicated cocktails. What actually is categorized as a tiki drink is up for some debate, but typically it, it is something that includes, like, a citrus a citrus component, a rum component, though you can swap out the rum for other things. A sweet-ish component, like typically like a syrup or, or something. And typically, like, you'll also have some kind of, like, uh, additional cordial, like a banana liqueur or, or, or like an orange curacao or something like that. As well as, like, you know, you have your sour, your sweet, your strong, and your weak. Like, that's what I like to say. Sometimes spice. You can throw in some bitters, you know? Have a good time. But I've been really getting into this, and so there's this one there's this one syrup in tiki culture. By the way, all the syrups I make are excellent on ice cream, just as a heads up. Mm. Uh, not, not just good for cocktails, but also good for ice cream. And there's this one syrup that's typically served in, like, uh, if you've ever been to New Orleans, traditionally what the hurricane is made out of. Yes, 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 yes. It's typically made out of fashionola. It turns out that nobody knows what fashionola is. What is it? I wish I could tell you the honest answer, Claude, but oh, okay. the answer is, um, so a lot of the tiki people like in the fifties were so secretive about their drinks that they would do things such as like put the ingredients of their drinks, like down for their bartenders. And instead of t- being like, Oh, use one ounce of this syrup and use one ounce of rum or something like that. When they make their drinks, what they would do is be like, you're going to use one ounce of bottle number one and then two ounces of bottle number four to make this cocktail oh no like that and so the actual recipe for fashionola has been lost to time oh no most of the other recipes have like made it out because like some bartender remembered what it was but the fashionola recipe has not made it out and i'll be honest i'm not convinced that fashionola just isn't like somebody trying to trademark the word passion fruit syrup as passionola but couldn't get away with that, so they used Fashionola. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It might just be passion fruit syrup. The world may never know. <laughs> the world may never know. But what the tiki the tiki lore is, is that Fashionola is a passion fruit forward fruit blend syrup. It is most equivalent to fruit punch. So what I have been doing, and what a lot of the tiki community does, is they make their own Fashionola. So everybody has their own Fashionola to make hurricanes with. And so I've been experimenting so that I can develop my own recipe for Fashionola. Oh. <laughs> so that there's like a bar thatch Fashionola. And I-, I see. I've been spending a lot of time doing this because it takes 24 hours to make a proper Fashionola, in my opinion. Because hmm. all you do is you make a fruit salad that is passion fruit heavy. 
Oh, I, I get, get the passionola, passion yes. fruit. Yes, exactly. I, I understand now. That makes yes. a lot more sense. It's very passion fruit forward. So you put a bunch of passion fruit in. You put like I've been putting strawberries in recently. Maybe some mango, maybe some pineapple, a little bit of pomegranate, and then you just throw a bunch of sugar on it, and then the sugar like sucks all the juices out of the fruit, mm. and it makes a syrup after oh, you let okay. it sit for like twenty four hours. So I've been doing that. That that has been a lot of my week. It sounds insane, but it's really fun. <laughs> it's been really fun. And you get to make cocktails to try them out, so it, it really works out. This is a family show, but sorry, guys, I've been making cocktails. Oh, no, alcohol. This is Thatch's Pash Time. That's one of the least consequential vices around here. It's fine. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. It's been accepted for years. <laughs> we're, we're like 100 years out from when it was unacceptable, you know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that, that is what I've been doing this week instead of playing Pokemon. <laughs> Is I've been making fashion fruit syrup and working on my outdoor bar. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to take a picture. I also made an indoor bar. I have two bars. This is, I have a problem. Clearly. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to be the one to say that. <laughs> well, Claude, next time you're over, we can, you can hang out at my bar. Oh, cool. And then it won't cool. be a problem. Because, yeah. yeah. And then it won't be a problem because you got to enjoy it. You've partaken. You've partaken. It's, I've shared. You understand. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. You guys been up to anything fun? So I tried out Poke Rogue. What is Poke Rogue? Have you not seen people posting about it? Oh, yeah. No. It's all the rage right now. What is it? It's a roguelike for Pokemon. What? When you start off, yeah. you get like 10 points and you only start off with the starters, but then it starts okay. getting crazy the further you go. Okay. Um, yeah, and there's like no level cap at all. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of busted and I'm never touching it again because it's such a massive time sink. Yep. I do like some of the crazy egg moves they get out there, like Fire Dance, Cyndaquil. Okay. My goodness. Oh, okay. Oof. But uh, interesting. Yeah, no. <laughs> my my go to starters were like a Flamigo with a water starter and a fire starter. Interesting. Flamigo is good, turns out. That's why it's a speedrun Pokemon. But, yeah, I, I believe it. And I was lucky enough to find one. So Flying Fighting is not a bad type. I'm not going to lie. That's not a bad type. It goes a long way. Yeah. It gets good coverage. It hits hard. Like, Flamigo is a solid Pokemon that I regularly forget exists. So. Yes. Yep. Oh, I understand. Uh, what about you, Claude? You been doing up to anything fun? Uh, in, in my free time when I'm not at rehearsal, like 24 hours a week, on top of my nine, you know, normal 40 hour work week job. 24 hours a week is a lot. Yeah, it's a part time job to be in a yeah, show. Yeah, that Sometimes. is. That is actually. In the free time that I do have, I've been trying to nuzlock Pokemon Run and Bun, mm -hmm. and it's very, very hard, but I'm having so much fun of it about it because it's all the best parts in my mind of draft where it's building the teams, but you don't have to worry about playing other people. And, yeah. you know, the AI is predictable, yet they have broken, broken Pokemon. So it's just a matter of, it's all just a big puzzle game for me, which yeah, I greatly enjoy. So I've been doing that in my free time and... I've been watching a lot of TCG stuff. I haven't played like anything. <laughs> it's okay. Do you like Charizard? That no, I hate that, Charizard. That's the all right. right then now, you're I probably think. better off right now. Yeah, but this is the meta for me because I I have Meowskarat okay. built. I was gonna and, say and I beat I, it. I keep trying to think of why Meowskarat is not better, and then I started playing it a little bit, and it's like oh, because it has to play it has to play energies like every other deck. Yeah, it's <laughs> inconsistent. Saying, my favorite thing has been the Torterra deck that people say should be good, but they're just like, it would it's be good not. if there was a Turtwig in format that had less than, 80 yeah. with it, less than 80 HP. It would be better, correct, if it could use Buddy Poffin. If it used Buddy Poffin, I think Torterra would be okay. I'm just eagerly waiting. I don't know, but like you do have a Spothra or something that exists and isn't yes. doing great. So. And granted, I'm a huge fan of Arceus Armor Rouge and, yeah, well, same and Arceus Gudra. I love Arceus Gudra. I like a lot of Arceus decks right now. I feel like that's my play. Alolan Vulpix is always solid. Like it's yeah. uh, Gudra Vulpix is my go-to at the moment. But uh, I'm looking forward to the next set at the end of next month. The next set in May is going to be fun. Yeah. What What does that bring? Uh, Iron oh. Thorns deck. If you yeah. want to play Control. If you want to okay. like, remember remember Path of the Peak, but now it's a Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, great. Good. Good. It good. just it just sits there. The deck is literally just four Iron Thorns, and you just yeah, I'm like I'm attaching. I'm attaching. You just bop. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually okay with that if it works. And I'm good. okay with it being on a Pokemon too. Like they're at least advancing the board. I think you could do a thing where like you play Professor Turo along with like the Maridon, like the baby Maridon to help charge up faster. Mm -hmm. 
I think you do something with that. I'm. I think I'm okay with that. I've heard the new Dragapult supposed to be really, really good. Yeah. The new Dragapult is supposed to be good. It, it's just because people it's, are very afraid. It's a Charizard that doesn't have a weakness. You know. That's even worse. I. Why do yeah. we keep doing this to ourselves? Yeah. We got rid of Fairy type. I'm so looking forward to Greninja. Greninja, I think is. I think Greninja is overhyped. I'm going to be honest. I think Greninja is overhyped. I don't care. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. Like I'm going to enjoy playing it regardless. I do also like Greninja. It's like I like Greninja as a Pokemon. I don't care. <laughs> my favorite deck of all time at, was the uh, Greninja Break deck from back Ooh. in the day. Is the oh, new yeah, Luxray any good? I've heard things about Luxray. It's okay. I've heard. I've heard people say it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. okay. It's not like any of the other cards we mentioned, but it's okay. Ursa Luna's uh, a thing. Ursa Luna's going to be big next set. Ogre Ponds are cute. Like, I think the the the, the Drac Lock being very good helps a lot. Yes. Yeah, being Pidgeotto. Old be, Pidgeotto. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Ursa Luna's going to make Lost Box very good. Yeah, there's a lot of good cards. Ursa Luna's going to make a lot of decks really good. Honestly, it helps out a lot of things. Just having, like, a colorless version of the Charizard. Oh, and then there's Reset Stamp and the the box. The pretty yeah. box. Yeah, I, I'm really happy with what they do with the Ice Specs. They've kind of taken, like, a lot of the overpowered trainers from back in the day, and they just made them Ice Specs. Yep. See, like, part of me like, wants to get a Prime Catcher, because I feel like most decks are still going to want a Prime Catcher. Yeah. They're, they're going to reprint it eventually, right? Like, it'll it'll load. Probably. I already bought two, so, like, I'm I'm in shame, but, like, it's okay. The only one I have right now is Belt, because that's all I want to play with any of my Arceus yeah, decks. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, if you if you buy a booster box, you get like one or two at least, so it's not too bad. Yes, you I believe two. you get on an average two. Uh, yeah. Yes, unless There's you're like small... me and you get a booster box and you get eleven hits in the entire box and you sit there and cry because <laughs> you get like the, like the low range of everything. I'm like, wow, this is it. And then I got like, I don't think I got any like super rare anything. I'm like, all right, well, this is fun. So sorry. So sorry. That's, that happens. Yeah, but like I walked away with the entire future. Uh, was it uh, ancient box deck? I did walk away with Ancient Box out of my box as well. It was weird. It's pretty solid. It's just, like, super cheap anyway. So it yeah. Doesn't yeah. I, ha- I pulled that and the A-spec for it. I'm like, all right, well, I have Ancient yeah. Box now. That's fine. So, like, okay, you could take a $20 bill and make the deck yourself if you go to a store. Yes. Yes. Mm. It's supposed to be good, but, yeah, that's that. Yeah, I'm going to cut us off so we don't keep Please going do. on TCG tirade. And I'm going to make us kick it on over to the news. So let's cue that epic music. <laughs> Radio Tower. This just in. Welcome to the news. In the news, we've got a few things to talk about. First off, being uh, a bunch of sitting cuties were restocked. That's something. Yay! I, I think that actually matters because, like, sometimes the one I'm looking for is just not there, and it's kind of a bummer. Like when I, uh, I so I so uh, last year around nationals, my buddies who aren't like huge Pokemon fans but are like Pokemon aware. Is what I'll call them. Uh, mm-hmm. We went to uh, we went to the Pokemon Center at NAIC, and they really wanted like the Mareep sitting cutie because one of their fiancés like really liked it. And, Understandable, uh, Mareep is adorable, yeah. uh, but they didn't have any of the Mareeps left at the NAIC Pokemon Center. Uh, um, and then I was just like, oh, I'll just order it for them on PokemonCenter.com. Also out of stock. I mean, uh, they probably stocked the Pokemon Center with the ones at the yes. shipping. Yeah, but yeah, uh, and then also out of stock. Uh, was that like there's a there's a store in Dayton, Ohio called Original One Fifty One, which just orders a bunch of stuff from Japan and resells it for Pokemon. Um, and they were also out of stock, so it ended up being I went to Japan for vacation last year and I just bought it for them there. <laughs> but uh, it was it was it's a whole thing. So may, hopefully maybe Marie's there. Maybe Marie's in Pokemon Center right now. I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, That'd be nice. But yeah, uh, yeah. But sitting cuties are restocked. Followed up by, uh, as a Golden Week celebration, when I first read this, I thought it said Golden Week celebration. I go, what kind of week is that? Uh, uh, the best I'll... kind of week. <laughs> uh, there's an outbreak for Relar, Varum, and Shinx, and Magikarp until next Monday. 
Uh, Walking Wake and Iron Leaves are also back and can drop Herba Mystica. So if you really missed out on that Walking Wake and Iron Leaves, because this is the most messed up way to distribute a legendary Pokemon, uh, they uh, they are available that way. Also, they're not technically legendary stats. I understand, guys. Um, they're close but, enough. <laughs> they're, they're close te- enough. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're closer to mythicals, but they're still legal in VGC. So you it's, know. Weird. it's weird. They're, it's weird. They are event only VGC Pokemon. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know who's got red. I believe it's Claude. Ah, uh, it's me. I do. All right. Uh, they are giving away a Flutter main for Korean Nationals. It's Yay. from the senior division since the master teams were boycotting last year with met- metronome teams. I do remember uh, that. I do. Yeah, that was fun. That, that was so um, silly. It, what a silly thing. Yep. And no, then go next week. I forgot to type it. Ah, yeah. That's next week then. Cool. Um, Go news. Alongside the biome changes, Wiglet was released for the beach biome and regional Pokemon spawns differently now. And regional yeah, Pokemon I didn't spawns that. differently now. Ah. It's it's actually really cool. That's cool. Uh, I like that. Be- because there's like biomes and so different you can like actually see on the map where different Pokemon might be. I haven't so, opened up the app in like four it, years. It feels so. like it feels like a better way to handle it than like the nests, which I'm sure still mm-hmm. exist, but they do, from uh, what I could tell. Yeah, the the nest probably still exists, but like, it is a much better way to like be like, oh, I can catch different Pokemon if I walk over there. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, all right, I guess we'll close it out here. Uh, Deonsi is being added for everyone May first, but uh, if you already got one from, Go- yeah, That's in cool. Pokemon Go, uh, if you already got one, uh, you you don't get another one it's not like shaman where they gave us like 20 of them yes uh, you you only get one you just get candy if you've already got it from go fest mm-hmm. uh and then the three days surrounding it so the first second and third you should be able to get research from spinning spinners that'll give you mega energy for it because they don't want people to catch more of them in mega raids so <laughs> reasonable yeah uh next up we have rivals week which is not terribly exciting but it'll spawn regional rivals like Sockthrow, Durant, Heatmore, and Zangoose, Subviper. And that goes from the 4th to the 9th. Yay. Yeah. Um, in TCG News, the Gardevoir EX League Battle deck, I believe, released last week. Yes. Um, it's not a Charizard, but it is, it's, like, playable. Yeah, it's... Uh, you do need a Ace spec and Screamtail. It doesn't come with a Screamtail for some reason, and I don't know why, but weird that makes it playable <laughs> you need the cape so it's not even that expensive of an ace no. pack. it's like a maybe yeah. five bucks six i think it's between five and ten somewhere in there yeah, somewhere good uh, enough charizard charizard players are debating playing the cape now because everyone's playing charizard mirrors so you know uh, yeah i've seen that now i honestly everyone... don't blame them <laughs> the bird. that's the debate play the bird just play the bird it's like... <laughs> play the ostrich and uh, rumors are that the small set in August we reported like two weeks ago mm-hmm. might be loyal three themed with Petron. Where's the where are the dragons? I thought they're gonna be dragons. I believe the dragon set is like September in Japan or something. Uh, yeah, sad. Uh, from my understanding, like June is supposed to be loyal three plus Petron for Japan, and then stellar mm-hmm. debuts in July, and then Beautiful. dragons and more stellar Pokemon in like. After Worlds time, so it shouldn't be the dragons because you know it's it exists for Worlds legality reasons. I'm sure because it mm-hmm. it launches like just in time to be legal for Worlds, so mm-hmm. it means they have to ban less cards for Japan. Understandable. Uh, all right. Well, it's time for Puckle's Pokey Opinion. What is Poke your favorite? Opinion. What is your favorite rivalry amongst Pokemon? I don't know what that means, Sigma. Yeah, like in the Pokemon Go event, you know, Durant and Heatmore, those guys. Oh, oh I, I, I like uh, Fur like, and Ratatata. I was thinking Ash and Ash and no, 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 no. <laughs> the Pokemon themselves, the Pokemon. Yeah, that's my favorite rivalry too. It's Ash and Gary. Actually, okay, okay, but like, think about how hyped that was when they fought. Okay, to be Which fair, time? the Paul, the Paul battles were the best ones of the year. Okay, but you would have to have endured what was Gen 4 anime. I I understand. (laughs) But Gen 4 anime, I thought, was wonderful. It was better than Gen 5 anime. Also true. 
Gen 5 anime didn't have the rival battles to look forward to. Uh, but whenever Paul showed up, you knew you were due for like a good battle. Yeah. I guess it's, I mean, the battles in that, in that section of the anime were done very well. Especially the uh, battle up at the lake. Mm, yeah. Like right by the snow point city. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a two part episode. They made a big deal about that one. And that was exciting because I think it took like a, was that when it was taking like a year between gyms or something? Yes. Uh, yes it was. No, not then. It was between like four and five. It took a long no, it time. Was, it was like between that. seven and eight. Seven and eight had like a 50 episode gap. It was pretty bad. It was really Uh, bad. It was was like an entire season. It was really no gem. Yeah, it was because you use the gems to gauge how far you're getting in the series, and when it takes fifty episodes to get a gem, it's like it was pretty bad. It was it was bad. I I just miss Saturday morning cartoons. Anybody else? Yeah, I I, I missed time for Saturday morning cartoons. I wish I had more time for that kind of stuff. I do too. Like, Mm. I I don't know. To be fair, like a lot of my, a lot of my nostalgia for that is just gone because that's when we typically record this podcast. Yep. That's is like when Saturday (laughs) morning cartoons would be. And I'm just like, oh man, well we do the podcast instead. That's okay. That's okay. I would love Saturday morning cartoons to make a, make a comeback. But yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I get. Oh, I guess I didn't answer the question, but I mean, we uh, can leave that for next week. We we answer yeah, yeah, yeah. Ash's rivals. I may or may not be on next week. We'll see how that scheduling works out. Oh my! We'll see how that scheduling works out. All right. Well, uh, yeah. With that said, guys, we are gonna move on uh to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're gonna quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark from the Dunsparce Gang, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. Welcome to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to go ahead and ask your questions to our co-host. Our first question this week is going to come to you guys from Shiny Mewtwo Curie. In all Kanto Pokemon games, a book in the Cinnabar Island Lab shows when Mewtwo was created. What was the date on which Mewtwo was created? Oh no, I know it's February 6th. I have no clue what year it is. Oh, we don't need the year. I don't think there's actually a year attached to it. I remember it happening in like every February 6th, I believe. Uh, yeah, I that's good enough for me. My I know it's February. Cool. I'm pretty sure it's the 6th. February 6th is correct. Um, That is the answer. February Everyone 6th. Posted. Yeah, you are <laughs> correct. Everybody does post it. The downside you are of also following correct. the Pokemon social media. It's like you, yes. February 6th, you, you know, you know. Mewtwo's birthday. Back in Pokemon Generation 1, when nothing had worlds, Arcanine roamed China, um, a random self co employee came from Russia. It's fine. It's fine. Raichu is killing Indian elephants. That's okay. Yes, exactly. Wait, what? Right, yep. I don't want to know. That is in the Gen 1 Pokedex entry for Raichu. Okay. Fun fact. It's electricity I'll... is strong enough to take down an Indian elephant. Yep. Yep. That's right. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question from Ewan. Uh, in Generation 3, all moves are assigned contest types. Only one rock type move is assigned the cute type. What oh, is no. that rock type oh, move? Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, no. This is better so, than the alternative, uh, yeah, okay, believe okay, me. Okay. My first thought would be ancient power, but I don't know. That sounds like it would be a smart move. Uh, uh, I say that because it's one that becomes a... One, it has 100% accuracy, and two, it... Hmm. Okay, so we have a rock type move. There aren't it's many in Gen Three. A cute rock type move. Yep, yeah, they're all cute. I get it. Are they? Um, it, what is defense curl? Not a rock type move. It's not roll out type. could be. That was my thought. Was defense curl and roll out? Um, uh, because otherwise you got like rock tomb, rock throw, rock slide. 
I don't think it's that. Is there a mud type rock move or all the mud moves ground? Mud move should be ground. Okay. I think it's probably um, between ancient power and rollout. Like the other one could be rock too. I don't know. I don't think. Ma- I, I definitely think it's rollout over ancient power. I, I think I remember ancient power being either tough or smart. I could see it being smart. I feel like most of the rock moves are probably tough. Yeah. Um, I, I would go with rollout because I don't know why. Rollout thought- is. Fampies are cute and Fampies roll out. I like this plan. Yeah, <laughs> I like this logic. <laughs> this is good logic. I like it. Feels uh, ice ball. Ice ball is ice type roll out. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We are this. we are we going with roll out? <laughs> I think so. We're going with roll out. Roll out is correct. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, fun fact, just like in battle, defense curl gives you a two time bonus to the hearts uh, you earn in the contest, just like it's used in battle. Pill combination moves. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you guys are two for two. Your next question is going to be your Pokedex entry question, as always. It's going to come to you from Mole Coffee. This Pokemon's Pokemon Violet entry reads, The hardness of this Pokemon's fur depends on its mood. When this Pokemon is prepared for battle, its fur becomes pointed and needle sharp. Who's that Pokemon? Oh, dear. Hacknia. That's not hair. That's not fur. No. Oh, fur. Um, it, fur. It's oh, spiky fur. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Togedemaru. I guess it's fur. Sure. I, I, I'm I, guessing. I don't know. I'm just trying to think. I, like, I think it's a good first guess. I uh, I don't know where to go with it. I want to needle like the only like arm. I'm thinking like a porcupine. The only porcupine Pokemon I can think of is Togedemaru. Hear me out. What if it's Jolteon? It could be Jolteon. I could definitely see it being Jolteon. Oh, wait. What, what was the Pokedex from? Scarlet or Violet, Violet. Oh, okay, okay. Darn. Uh, is so no token tomorrow. Token tomorrow. Token tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So maybe it is Jolteon. I don't hate that as an option. Eevees are in every Pokedex, so it's always worth a shot. True. Very true. My other guess was Furfuru, but being Violet means it's not Furfuru. So ah, yes. Are you going Jolteon then? I think so. Yeah. Jolteon is unfortunately incorrect. Your next entry comes from Pokemon Scarlet, and it reads, This Pokemon deftly wields the vine hidden beneath its long fur, slamming the hard flower bud against its opponents. Flower bud? See, it sounds like Rosary, but that's not in the game. Um, hmm. Wait. Flower. Uh, wait, wait. Florigato? Oh, it could definitely be Florigato. That's where I go with a flower. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, it could be Mascarada, but I, I, I think uh, that's boring. I, I think Florigato. I, I would go with Florigato because I'm OK with yeah. that. Yeah, because they're both from this gen. So it makes me think it's a Gen 9 Pokemon. So, yeah, Florigato no, totally... is correct. Yay. Ooh. You guys are correct. That is Florigato. All right. Well, your next question is your multiple answer question. You can get up to three points here. Um, two points per answer. There are five total. If you get all five, you get three points. This is from K Fury zero zero. What five attacks have the word Aqua in their name? All right, we got Aqua, aqua Jet, Cutter, Aqua Cutter, Aqua Jet, um, aqua ring? aqua ring. Okay, those are three. Okay, uh, hmm, Team Aqua, right? What are, are there? Moves oh, aqua with Tail, aqua? aqua Tail. Yeah, that is yeah. four. That is four. So we said Aqua Jet, Aqua Ring, Aqua Tail, Aqua Cutter. Yep. Missing hmm. one. Um, is there one with Aqua later in the name? Oh. No. <laughs> Sadly, it is not Araquanid. But, you know. Araqua Water. <laughs> Arak Water. <laughs> Arak Water. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, Quaqua Balls Move. The Step. Oh, Aqua, Aqua Step. step. Yeah. Aqua Step. That's it. Aqua Step is correct. That is all five. You guys get three points. You are six for four. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yay. Uh, uh, Yay. Some number for some other number. Yeah. Yay. The points matter. All points right. This, matter. La- this last question is going to come from Darkest Drifter. He asks, what is the fastest Moody Pokemon? The fastest Pokemon with the Moody ability. Oh, no. Glalie at 80. No. Um, is it Glalie or is it the uh, Pepper now? Oh, uh, that's, I think that's 77. Oh, I don't know God. what its speed is. Oh, Scoville. Uh, um, wait, yeah. wait. 
I know it gets chlorophyll to... too. Yeah, I know. It can be the fastest, just the answer. Or no, it can't. Well, no, because um, you can't have chlorophyll. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's like 75. I don't think it's faster than Glalie. Um, I mean, wait, I know wait, wait. Smeargle is 75. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's 75. Yeah, all right. So let me go through the moody Pokemon in my head. No way it's Rem- Remoraid. Not Artillery. Not Smeargle. Not Snorlax. It could be Glalie because Glalie's base 80. Uh, yeah. Other ones are Barrel, which is not. And then Scoville. And so I'm guessing Glalie. I think Glalie's the highest if it's 80. Yeah, it's between it's between Scoville and, and Glalie. I'm pretty I just sure don't know Scoville what... is 75. All right, because that's we could use the hint, but I don't know. No, no hints. Okay, we'll, we'll who say needs the hints? We'll yeah, say I'm, let's go Glalie. Glalie. Glalie is correct. That's Yo. right. Uh, Glalie has a base stat of 80. Scovillain and Smeargle are tied for second with 75, okay. and Bibarel, uh is at 71. Remoraid follows up at 65 because it's faster than Art- Octillery. So that is a perfect score for you two today. I sure I'm sure that changes up the standing somehow. Probably let's find out. Um, I don't think anybody wins yet in this race to 40. And we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna change it, uh, sort it in first place. We've got our Sigma with 35. Oh wow, we're close. Uh, yeah, in second place we've got Claude Nine with 30. Oh, I have more than I thought I did. Yeah, apparently. Um, Perfect and, scores get and, you there. Yeah, in third we've got Linian with twenty nine, and fourth Jushiro with twenty six, and fifth Seth Philo with twenty two, in sixth Whimsicott with twenty, in seventh we've got a tie between Sublime and Shark at fourteen, in ninth we've got Doctor Shamu with thirteen, and bringing up the rear Bosephus with five. Dang! Now I have to find out when Sigma's on next and make sure I get two in before that. I haven't signed up <laughs> for anything yet, so uh, you got some time. All right. Well, with that, guys, we're going to kick it on over uh, to our topic. Hey, Thatcher, a lot of you have been asking how you can hang out with us during the week. Well, the best way to do so is come to our Discord server at PuckleDiscord.com. You can join our server and you can hang out with us, talk Pokemon, battle, do a bunch of cool things, join in our tournaments. So what's stopping you? Come on over, PuckleDiscord.com. You can jump right on in and have a good time talking with the hosts of the show, as well as the large community we've gathered over the years. So come on, let's hang out. Welcome to our topic. Our topic today is worst moves of each generation, uh, which what we're going to do is the three of us are going to go through the moves of each generation. We've already selected or will select a move that we think is the wor- worst move to come out of that generation and discuss and come up with a victor for one through nine. Yeah. So simple concept. I think we're ready to go. I'm going to let you guys introduce your moves first because they're probably the same as mine. So <laughs> let's go ahead. Uh, Sig. Yeah, Claude. Yeah, Sigma. You, you Sigma. You Sigma. You right. started off. Yeah, this was your topic idea, Sigma. So let's let's go ahead and let you start. All right, Gen One was a little hard, and this one, uh, I'm gonna have to go. I have two, and one's a really bad move, and I feel bad for not saying first. But Lick being a Ghost type, making Ghost type physical for multiple Gens, and just being bad. I uh, disagree. I disagree actually with Lick a lot because Lick was the only damaging like the da- with like a base power. It was the only damaging ghost type. Ghost type move. I want to fight back. That is the problem because then it ghost became physical for three generations afterwards because of that. Two generations. Two generations after the physical special split was like the best thing that ever happened to Pokemon. It is. Yes. Like having Shadow Ball have to be a physical attack is such a disappointment because of Lick. I think I think the physical special split is what made competitive Pokemon actually viable. Correct. It is. Yes, you are correct. That was the biggest thing in Pokemon. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, but yeah, I I will disagree on like, what's your other one? What's your other one? Oh, Razor Wind. It's the worst move. So this is like in the almost the same vein of what I was going to recommend, which is Skull Bash. OK, Skull Bash. Yo, well, the different take than where I was going. This is going to be fun. I, I think I think Razor Wind is probably more useless than Skull Bash, though. I would I would agree with that. It's a normal type. It had 75% accuracy. What? I didn't even see that. Oh my gosh. That was in Gen 1. Uh, they didn't fix its accuracy until Gen 3. 
they gave it crit boost in Gen 2, but took away its crit boost in Gen 3 when they gave it the 100% accuracy. Oh my gosh, it's such a bad move. It Because it's a two-turn move, too. And it's still only 80 power. It's so bad. It's a normal type instead of flying for some reason. It's so bad. It's so bad. It is abysmal. I remember when I battled the wild Absol and I tried to use that, I was like, what? <laughs> I forgot Absol got it. Bulbasaur gets it as an egg move? Oh, only in Gen 2. Thank God. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> Why? So does Totodile, by the way. Why would it ever use it? What is it trying to do? De- okay. All right. So while you went actually bad moves. Yes. I went a different route. All right. What do you? I was like, what's got? the worst possible mechanic they could have added to the game that would that would piss me off? Was it that's focus the one hit one hit KO moves? Oh, that's that's fair. Oh, no, those are fine. Those are fine. I, I hate the idea of there being something like, oh, you do this move and you can instantly kill whatever is in front of you. For 30% accuracy, I'm all for it. I, I don't yeah. care. I don't like it. If they and can't I, kill you in an average of three attacks, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I I would Sigma. I have no problem with it. After playing BSS, I, I have an appreciation for it. I don't like yeah, OHKO no, spam, but I think it's fine as like a move that you run. I think like, it was a dumb idea and they should never have done it. Like to, now, now, there is an argument that Sheer Cold is dumb because nothing is immune to it. Oh, I could I could say sure cold, but like I still think Razor Wind is the dumbest move. That's a different that's a different generation, isn't it? That's a different sure gen. Cold. Yeah. Like in Gen One, you could at least have a ghost type come in and you'd be immune. Or you could have a flying type kit come in and be immune to fissure. Also, in Gen One, if you were slower than the Pokemon, it doesn't work. Gen one yep. is weird. I'm just saying I didn't I don't I don't like the idea of there being an instant kill button, and that's what I thought was the worst. I mean, they haven't added that many more, so, you know. I know. And they the clearly problem. agree that it might have been a mistake. And it was. No one's arguing that. I, I, I think Razor Wind wins for me. That's fine. Razor Wind's also a terrible move. I can't tell you when I've ever used that move. Nobody has. I remember using it once or twice it, when I was a kid and didn't understand what a bad move was. I don't think anybody used it. Uh, it was a TM, so, like, a lot of Pokemon got it, if I remember correctly. Yes. And you just assume that a TM is a good move. Uh, it's not. Not always. Actually, did they bring it back as a TM at one point? Oh, no. I have to look this up now. All right. Well, let's move on to Generation 2. Let me pull up my Gen 2 moves. Gen 2. What moves were awful? I, like, are we just choosing, like, awful moves? Because, like, if it's just awful moves, I can think of, like, Gen 1, Gen 2, like, I don't know that they added, like, a ton of terrible moves outside of, like, frustration. I hated Snore. Uh, I, I think, like... I can't. When you add Sleep Talk, the same generation, Snore is pretty bad. Snore and Nightmare, though, also came out. This Nightmare was also there. That's the same thing, but worse. Yeah. Like, if we're talking, like, the like worst moves added is... I'm going to go on my train and be like Hidden Power. It was a mistake of a move. Hidden Power was that. bad for the health of the game. Uh, Correct. I can agree with that. Uh, I really like how they've controlled Hidden Power with Terra. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, Terra's... Terra Blast is so oh, much Terra better. Blast, yes. Terra Blast is much better. So if we're looking at just the moves that were added this generation, Twister. Twister I think Twister I... is an awful move. Oh, Twister is a terrible move. I have never been excited when I clicked the Twister. It has always done less damage than I think it should. It's 40 base power. It's a tackle. Worse move than Twister. Worse move than Twister, Endure. Actually, Endure is some new Endure is fun for like reverse yeah. shenanigans. I think Endure is terrible. And this was before Focus Ash, so I'm okay with it. Okay, uh, fine. They added, I think they added Reversal at the same time, too. I will be defeated by Twister. That's fine. Was Reversal added? I don't... It was added. Reversal... Yes, it was Gen 2. Same with Flail. Flail... I always thought Flail was in Gen 1. Really? I, I don't remember it, but yeah. I The one that, I, that really gets me is Waterfall's a Gen 1 move. Because it's a Seeking Signature move? Yeah. Because it's a Seeking Signature move. It's weird. I will take the L and we can go with Twister because Twister is bad. I, I'm okay with Twister. It almost made my short list. Yes. Triple Kick is also especially bad, but you know, Twister's you know, worse. It, Yeah, but Twister's just worse. Yes. Yes, it is. I thought Twister was 60 power and then no, it was 40. 40 and it's like, oh, that's that's really bad. It does have the niche of being able to hit things that are flying. That oh, much. yeah, that's true. I think you use that in a battle CD in Pokemon yep, XT. That's exactly what you do. That's where I learned it. Well, that was an easier one. We can we can move on to Gen 3 then. 
Gen three. Gen three added more moves though. So this is, I think my Gen three added a lot of useless moves. Is it useless or useful? It added a lot of moves. Useless, I think. Now, are we counting the shadow moves? No, we shouldn't include shadow moves. Uh, also, they're probably better than some of the moves that intro- were true. introduced in Gen three. Well, what what are you thinking? What are you thinking, Sigma? Is like a terrible Gen three move because like I have an idea, but this was another one I was like, there are so many bad ones. Uh, I'll I'll preface it with I that. I don't see a lot of bad ones on this list, and like all these. I have, are you? I have always hated seeing a wild Pokemon click Water Sport or Mud Sport. Oh yes, okay, yep. Those are bad. Those two specific. Actually, I was gonna like mention role play being a garbage move. Role play has at least some use. <laughs> But yeah, water sport, water sport, and mud sport. I have never seen those moves on a Pokemon that does not always already resist the types that it does. Or That's the problem. They were designed for double play, and you're, you're never wasting a move on those. There's a lot of moves that are like designed for doubles that just don't work out later. Like I think Gen Five, we could talk about like the pledge moves, but and Gen Five, I might have one of those, and Gen yeah. Six had an. A bunch of those too. But like, oh, uh, that's a, that's a really good one. Like, I can't think of a worse move than that. No, I was gonna, I was gonna say something else, but I, you blew me out of the water with, uh, with, uh, mud sport and water sport because whenever a Pokemon used them, I'm like, okay, I wasn't gonna use one of those moves anyway. So, smelling salts is pretty bad. Like, I was gonna go with like tickle. When was the last Tickle's time you fine. heard tickle? I mean, it's not great, but it's not awful. Tickle, tickle got cold, right? Like, I, well, I think mud sport and water sport also got cold, but. Uh, Tickle's still around, I think. Tickle's fine. It's a minus one attack, minus one defense. Like, it's, it has some use. Just nothing wants to use it. Yeah, Mud Sport, Mud Sport is awful. And so is, uh, so is, uh, Water Sport. I mean, the stock, the moves that came with Stockpile are also kind of bad. Oh, yeah. The whole mechanic was a bad mechanic. They're fine. They're cute. So once, um, when I was playing, uh, Pokemon Emerald as a kid, um i got on the ss aqua i was doing like as in uh gen three you could hunt for uh you could hunt for ditto right and i was trying to get ditto of every nature so i could uh so i could trade them up to my gen four games and do a bunch of breeding in gen four and i so i was doing that in pokemon emerald and i accidentally got on the ss aqua with a team full of uh ditto because i was checking all of their natures and i wasn't thinking about it and there's one person on that boat that ends up having a pelipper that only knows like stockpile swallow and spit up and so i got stuck with the ditto transformed into that pelipper and it was the worst battle of all time and gen 3 stockpile was not Oof. also like cosmic power it was bad it was bad it was just a bad time Th- those are those are bad moves too yeah, those not, are bad. A, not a not as bad it was just a bad time but uh i digress i guess we're going to uh gen 4 Wow, this is yeah. taking a lot less time than I expected. I thought we'd be more like I mean, fighting over moves. Oh, wait. No, I feel like it's very easy for us to agree over which moves are terrible. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. I the later we... gens have a lot. Oh, no. There's a gen one move we missed. Uh-oh. You know how you said Razor Wind? I think yeah. I can beat Razor Wind. What do you get? Comet Punch. Ooh. Comet Punch isn't good, but there are so many just like it. Yeah, but it's 85 accuracy, 18 power. What about barrage? Comet Comet Punch is a multi hit though, right? It is. That's why both those. That's why it's both those things. It's, it, look at Fury Swipes. Barrage is the same thing. Barrage is fifteen oh. power. So is Fury Swipes. I think. Never fine, 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 fine. Never mind. Yeah. Gen four. They they had like five million of those moves recolored, despite still being normal moves. It's bad. Okay. Uh. So Gen four. We're on to Gen 4. So many really good moves here. This is hard. There's also a lot of... Okay, there's a lot of really good moves because this is when they came up with the physical special split and they had to fill out like the holes that they were missing. Yes, I agree with that. I do agree with that. I have uh, one. There there are still a few bad moves here. Um, okay, Sigma, tell us what yours is just so Claude and I could be like, okay, never mind. You were right. Um, well, right. So I, I have three. What you Trump say? card is bad. That that's on my list of ones I need to read so I can understand why it's good or bad. One, you never PP up it. Um, each time you use it, it's based on how much PP you have. If it's your last one of the five PP that it comes with, it's two hundred base power. Before that, it only gets up to eighty. If you have more than four PP left on your Pokemon, it is forty power. Three, it's fifty. Two, it's sixty. One, it's eighty, and then zero, it's two hundred. It gets bonus points for being convoluted. 
Yes, uh, that is bad, but there are two others I would like to talk about. Um, in the same vein, you have Ring Out. That is up there, yes. That is a bad move. And uh, then Miracle Eye. Miracle Eye I'm okay with. It's Miracle the one that, like, I you had dark types with psychic moves. Moves. Yes, it's basically Odor Sleuth, but for Psychic to Dark. I'm okay with those moves existing. It's so I, I think I think Miracle Eye is okay because Odor Sleuth exists and it's fine. Yeah, but Odor Sleuth only existed because of normal types. Kind of, yeah. This is back uh, when they're trying to give Psychic back something because Pursuit was Pursuit was too buffed. Ah, uh, true. Pursuit killed a lot of things. I I would be willing to go with either Ring Out Ring Out or Trump Card. I think Trump Card Ring Out is probably bad. worse. I I yeah Trump cards I don't know I because Trump card had like some gimmicky plays in competitive I think Ring Out's worse in all honesty Ring Out's really bad especially since they also gave a legendary version to it to Reggie Gigas didn't they Crush Grip yeah yeah they did Ring Out for those of you at home uh the power varies between one hundred and one hundred twenty one and is greater the more HP the target has um and the calculation is some math problem you have to work out in your head it's one twenty one if they're at max HP. Even and if they're not, it's whatever doing, percentage doesn't, it is. still isn't doing up damage. It's underwhelming, and for some reason, Crush Grip wasn't even stronger. I don't know why they didn't strengthen Crush Grip. No, it wasn't. You're absolutely correct. It should have been 150 power. It's a legendary Pokemon's move. Or you could have just given it Ring Out, because it's the same move. I don't... It is the same move. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's bad. It's a bad move. All right, well, uh, I guess on to Gen 5. Okay, I got one here, and it's really bad. All right, Claude, give it to us. Quash. No, that one's fine. Quash, no, Quash is actually good. That was that was used by Sableye, actually, pretty effectively in doubles. Prankster Sableye really? uses Quash. Um, Prankster Sableye was using Quash in VGC. I didn't realize I got that. Never mind. So you can Prankster Quash, yeah. Yeah, that, that is, I think Murkrow gets it, too. Yeah. Like, I almost just want to nominate all of the pledge moves for trying something, but also just failing at it. But at that point, then I would move to the power slash guard split moves. Uh, they aren't exciting. I can tell. I, I'm not mad about those. I'm I'm mad that they exist as well. Magic room is also really weird. It's like a weird trick room substitution. Isn't that Wonder the one that gets rid of items? There's the item a Wonder room right? as well. Yeah, trick room. Yeah, magic room's the one that like gets rid of items, so like it's never going to be used anyway, so it's fine. And then uh, wonder room swaps defense and special defense. That one's so Ooh. weird. That one's bad. All that right. one's bad. That one. That one might win. Oh, wonder room. Yeah, wonder room's pretty bad too. I didn't like round, but like there's that a round was on my list as well. But it ge- here's the thing about round: it gets better in later generations when they come up with abilities to Sound. make normal moves different types well that and it becomes a sound based move so it allows it also to go true, behind yeah. sub so it has a niche role i mean synchro noise is also trash but i think wonder room's worse oh synchro noise you're we're we're all correct synchro noise is like right Wait, there what does bestow work. do it gives an item to someone else i think it's a doubles thing that no one ever has used uh, so also because they removed very, the very move bad, the game. bad 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 move so are we going bestow or wonder room I think Wonder Room's still worse. I think Wonder Room's worse, yeah. Yeah, Wonder Room is worse. Okay, we're all we're all in agreement. They tried to make Trick Rooms a thing, and they failed miserably. Yeah, they did. All right, now we're on to Generation 6. And there's not a lot of moves. It's a bunch of... Yeah, I think Generation 6 is also... Not only when they were just like, oh, a bunch of new Pokemon, we probably should just, like, do the good Pokemon, and they did the same thing with the moves. There are, like, three bad moves here, I think. So... so- Maybe four. Let me double check because there's some I don't know. Like, there's a bunch of like, I've never heard of this move, or I don't remember what this move does. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let me go double check all this stuff. I can see a couple of moves where I'm just like, yeah, that probably doesn't need to exist. Like, there's things I'm like, I don't know what that move does. And then I'm like, all right, now I have to like open up all these pages and read through all the moves. And I'm like, all right. They, they introduced two moves that turn moves into electric types for some reason. Yes. I believe Ionic. Ion Deluge and Electrify do yep. very similar things. Uh, Electrify. Electrify is different because it's the, only on two targets Pokemon. move electric. Yeah. Whereas Ion Deluge only does it for normal types of text, yes. I think. So uh, those are both very bad. They're very bad and like very low so given in, out. And for some reason, they also came up with a move called Belch, which is just fling. Oh, Belch is If wonderful. you ate a berry, it's a strong move. 
and you can do it multiple times in a row is the thing belt a fling is only once per turn once per held item you eat the berry you can belt multiple times i'm wrong then i apologize belch is out belch isn't exciting but it's not bad i mean do we want to look at um what's it called celebrate and happy hour no that are just nothing that are just splash happy hour is great happy hour is good for like in-game stuff grinding money yeah Hold Hands doesn't do anything, though. I think it's Z-Move actually did. Granted, uh, in Gen 6... Hold Hands has no move. effect in battle. Um, it's literally an event move, though, so nothing learned it outside of it. And it's meant for a multi... Uh, it can be used in a double or triple battle. Exciting. Where uh, it, it's animated, and, it, and it's held, and it's... Yeah, they do a small, slight, different animation. Yeah. Ah. That's it. That's all it does is, oh, cool, here's an animation. That's it. So Why? That is pretty bad. This is... Where they started to decide that they wanted to give support to plus minus. Yep, with magnet flux. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's not yeah. good at all. I mean, at that point, though, like you, you have aromatic mist. Which, is- which one are we going with? It like there's just like a bat of like there's just like a bat of a bunch of bad electric type things going on here. That's all I'm hearing. Well, there's aromatic mist, which is oh, let's which raise is also the kind of bad. defense of one of your allies. Why? Yeah, By one, one stage. stage. Yeah. One stage. That's bad. That's bad. You know what we have nowadays? Decorate, which does two stages of each attack, right? I think that's what it does. I, I'm, or coaching. Aromatic Mist is really bad. That is bad. I think Aromatic Mist is worse than the rest of these, because at least the other ones were trying to do something. Aromatic Mist is just bad. Rotakiller yeah. is also like a special mo- mention here. I think Aromatic Mist is the loser here. I think it's the loser. I think Aromatic Mist is just her. Aromatic Mist, I'm, I think, I'm is totally worse. I'm okay with that, yeah. I would I would like to read the description of Rototiller though. Oh please, please, please. It's no longer with us. Rototiller raises the attack and special attack stats of all grounded grass type Pokemon on the field by one stage, except for those that are like flying or digging. And it fails if there are no grass types. So it's only had by like oh in Gen 6, it was had by like Doug Trio. You could be wasting your Excadrill's time with this, your diggers be like, no, you're low bunny. It's a good TCG move on Bunnelby. That's because it could attack twice, though. All right. Well, uh, that's Gen 6. Uh, Aromatic Mist is the loser there. And uh, we're on to Generation 7. I think we skipped the Z moves, if that's okay. I think we, I think we skipped. Yeah. I'm I did, really yeah. And are we counting all of the, like, Eevee moves and Pikachu moves? I mean, those are good moves, so... Uh, oh, the Let's Go the Let's Go moves? Yeah, but I, those are better moves than probably some of the other ones, so... Yeah. Well, what do you have? What do you have, Sigma? Uh, so I want to shot. So I chose not to do this one. It's a bad move. Toxic thread. Mm-hmm. But it's more. Oh, that is bad. The area dose signature move. Toxic thread. I was going to say it's more about bashing area dose than bashing toxic thread because it's a it's kind of a good move. If it's not on area dose. It actually is, though. You're not wrong. Uh, I, I, like have, I think I have one that's bad, but I have to double check and make sure there's something worse. What what I find funny is that because it, oh, it like they refuse to give to anything that's not area dose, it wasn't available in Gen Eight, but it's available in Gen Nine. It's one of the few moves that only misses Gen Eight. I don't okay. know why it's just on air. Why is it not on Spide Ops? I know it wouldn't help it, but Toxic Thread poisons the target and lowers its speed by one stage. That's actually not bad at all. Like that's fine. It's not super exciting, but it's not awful. The distribution's just bad. It's on area dose, and they didn't do anything to make area dose not bad. It's a Gen 9 Pokemon too. It's a Gen it's a Gen 7 like move on a Gen 2 Pokemon. It's like Fire Lash. I was gonna say it's just like Fire Lash that they created this Gen 2. Yep. But uh Fire Lash. Where they're just like, oh, let's give Heat more a signature move. Spotlight is the worst move that's ever seen competitive use. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah. I, I Spotlight was one of the ones I have, but the other one I had was Purify. Purify is really bad too. Oh my gosh. Uh, for, for those at home that don't know what Spotlight does, because it's not bad, uh, it lets you ignore redirection effects. Yeah, so imagine, like, someone uses Follow Me, and you use it on that Pokemon that used to follow. It has to be on the Pokemon that used the Follow Me. I think the and big use matter. was avoiding Storm Grain. That's, that was the big use for it. I, I could see that as, like, a tech, but, like, I don't think that works out a lot. Nope. Well, the, the issue is the Pokemon you were running it on is Clefairy, because... Starmie wasn't good in doubles. Lantern, no. Shenotic? <laughs> That's funny. No. So, like, Clefairy was the best Pokemon that could use it. So it got a it eventually was culled from the game, but it was it had use. Um, what were you gonna say, Claude? 
Uh, okay. Mine was Purify, which for those really that good. don't know is if the target has a non-volatile status condition, Purify cures it and then restores the user's HP by 50% of its own maximum health. Yay, it's like Wake Up Slap or Smelling Salts, except you heal. Yep, but you have to have the condition. Sparkling Aria might also be one of like the most awkward moves. Yeah. It doesn't do bonus damage to the burn that it heals. It just heals burn. It heals burns. I don't know why. But it's also it's a sound-based a... move, so it has... It's a good move. Yeah. I just don't understand the burn healing. I never understood the burn healing. No, that, that, that that's a weird choice for them to have added onto it. Uh, shout out to Gear Up for also being plus minus support. Yep. Yeah, strong strategy there, that plus minus. Just uh, for those watching now, Battle Factory plus minus, it's going to happen now. Gotta make I, that. The issue is it's only on Kling Clang and Magirna. Uh, plus one Milan Dart in the game. No, no, I mean the move. You can only use oh. it on Kling Clang or Magirna, which means it was never used because no one ever used Kling Clang or Magirna. And Magirna's Magirna. always banned. So. Yeah. Also true. Sad story. But yeah, Purify's bad. I think it's Purify. Wasn't Pukamuku's whole battle style to click Toxic and then... Yep. Yes. Yes, it was. And it has Recover anyway. And Rest. <laughs> like, it doesn't do anything on it. It's just redundant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It bad. All right. Well, I think Purify from Gen 7 is our choice. Yeah. Easily. All right. So uh, we're in Generation 8 now. We're almost, we're almost, we're almost there. Okay. We're, we're losing so, bad moves at this point. There. Whoa, there are still some really bad moves coming in. We are losing bad moves because they're adding less and less moves. Oh, please tell. Lowers the it lowers the target speed stat by one stage, but it doubles if it's a fire type. What's the name of this move? Tar shot. Ta oh, tar shot. Oh, tar shot. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the signature move of Karkol spit line. Uh, yeah, Mr. Col Colossal. Actually, just Colossal. It's just only Colossal gets this. It is Colossal's signature move, and I don't see there's even a tar Pokemon, so it's very odd that it's there. The it's other bad. bad one that I found was Tea Time, which just causes all Pokemon to eat their berries if they're holding one. That's funny. It's bad. I think Tar Shot is worse. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying it's the other bad one I could find. See, I was going to bash uh, G-Max Depletion because despite how cool G Gigantamax Duraludon looked, it was never correct to play it. Nope. <laughs> uh, because, like, who cares about losing two PP? You could be dropping the attack of both Pokemon in doubles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're never going to grind them out of PP with three attacks. You're already using a dragon attack, which isn't great. Like I, I like Tarshot. I think Tarshot is the worst one. Tarshot's pretty bad. I yeah. missed that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad. Tarshot's the worst one. Wow, that was easy. With Gen 9, there are so many I don't know. I'm realizing as I'm going through this list, I'm like, what is this? There's a lot of moves in Gen Move that... Yeah, there's a lot of signature moves that just, like, show up in Gen 9. Most of them are, like, reasonable, though. Yeah, Gen 9 did a good job, actually. I'm not gonna lie. The one that I thought was weird to exist as a move, I, I'm not saying it's a bad move, was Pounce. Pounce was a weird one. I'm, like, okay that it exists, but I, like, it's fine. I mean, there is a bad one. I'm saving it for right now, uh, because, but, oh, uh, comeuppance I, is kind of bad. I have one that's pretty bad. Okay. I think, um, and it's Doodle. Doodle's fine. Doodle's fine. It changes the ability of the user and ally to the targeted Pokemon's ability. So Doodle, is, so it's exclusive to uh, Grafii, right? Yeah. Um, early on, I think there were strategies to use it next to a slacking. Oh, okay. In doubles. So you, the downside is there are a lot of Pokemon this gen that can't have their abilities changed. Mm -hmm. Like you can't get Paradox, you can't get Ruin Pokemon, so, so it's pointless. it got worse as time went on. But it's a cute move. Like it has use. It has use. Um, they did just remake. Uh, what is it? Ring out, but worse this gen. With what? With 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 which? Have, with, have with you heard what? of the move Hard Press? Yes. Okay. Hard Press it, might. It is. Get. It is Ring out with a capped power of one hundred instead of one twenty. And sadly, it's like one of the better steel moves. But you know. So. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty bad. I mean, it, they remade a bad move already. Like, I don't know why they brought it back. They they deleted Ring Out from the game. I mean, so the other thing is, like, they added Filet Away, which is just chip off. No, it's not chip off. It's uh, Shell Smash. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Wrong move then. There's another one they added that's, like, very similar to, like, oh, if, if a Pokemon fainted, you can it does more damage. 
I forgot about Chip Away as a move. When did that? Or, when did that come out? Gen five, I think. But it did damage and wasn't terrible. Doing damage helps a lot in not being a bad move. Ah, so he, the other bad one that I found was Silk Trap from. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, yes. Another spider's signature move. Yes. It protects the user from all effects of physical and special moves. That's it. Doesn't it lower speed if they get hit or something? Isn't uh, it yes. like a King Shield variant or something? Correct. If they get hit, so you take all the damage, but like if it's like a flamethrower, you won't get burned, but they'll, they'll get their speed lowered one stage. It's just, and if it goes last in the turn, it fails. Mm. So it's only on, what's it? A super slow Pokemon. Yes. Spide ops with very low I mean, this kind of reminds me of the uh, signature move of our good friend Hisui and Avalog uh, from ah, Gen 8 yes. that gives a flinch chance on Hisui and Avalog because that flinch chance really is, is going to matter. Hey, it matters step. all the time. In Trick Room teams. 100%. But then again, you're running Hisui and Avalog, so, like, who's the real winner? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what have we decided? Are we thinking... I Silk Trap is bad, but also Spide Ops is so bad, too. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at with it. It's kind of like how Toxic Threat is like, it's not great, but also I, I blame Ariados for this. I I think I blame the move just being bad. Th- this move is kind of bad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even good. It, it is a King Shield variant. Yeah. It's a worse King Shield. But without, without the Protect, though, which is the whole reason to do it. No, it is a Protect. No, it's not protect. It just does the effects. You still take the damage. Yeah, you still take the damage. It's like if you get hit by fire punch, you still get hit by fire punch, but you can't get burned. That's so bad. Yeah, it's worse. Oh, that's so bad. It's not good. Yeah, it does have priority, though. It does have priority, so it won't go last. Uh, Yeah, sure. Priority plus four. Like, it's fine. Like, the only thing beating that is protect. Why are you protect? It's, It's not protect. It's worse. It's worse protect. But it's bad. It is bad. It's bad. It's bad. I agree. It's bad. It's like protect on a budget. Okay. It's it's protect from wish. Oh, I think that's it. I think that we did it. We did it, guys. I think that's it. Yeah. Why is why is it so hard to read this attack's ability? It's a great question. So we have uh, we have officially gone through every generation. We've identified the worst move, I think, in each generation. I, I, I think so. Uh, in the email, though, next week, let us know what move you think is the worst in general. Uh, with that, though, guys, I, I think I'm going to take us over to our uh, Pokemon of the episode. We will catch you on the flip flop. <laughs> Welcome to our Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 918, Spidops, the Trap Pokemon. It's Pokemon Scarlet, Pokedex entry reads, It clings to branches and ceilings, using its threads to m- and moves without a sound. It takes out its prey before the prey even notices. Sure it does. It has to. Yeah, with because... 35 base speed. I mean, come it on. It has to because it can't do anything else. Its That's base almost... attack is like 79. Its base special attack is 52. Its base speed is 35. Dude, this thing's so bad. It, it has sucker stake... punch. Hear me out. It has stake out. And sucker mm, punch. It's still bad. Oh, it's I'm not arguing thing. that. It's, it's, it's in ZU. There's not even like a... It's the worst web setter we have. And that's it's saying something. Bad. I, I bet so Jolting is probably better. Tarantula is such a cute Pokemon too, and then it evolves into this. Yeah, I think Tarantula I'm, has more viability than Spide Ops. I think I have heard that the spider it's based off of has like its eyes burned off every day in the sun or something like that. What it has to regrow them? Like the lens around its eyes? It's, it's got a it, ogre face spider. Uh, I have no idea. I have no I've idea. Seen a... Eyes. The the posterior medium eyes are a larger forward facing. These eyes have a wide field of view, blah, blah, blah. Uh, each night, a large area of light of a membrane is manufactured within the eye and destroyed at dawn, with the membrane being converted, converted into vesicles, which are then lysed. These are all words I don't know. These are, the, these are bio, biology uh, words. Eight, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it does, like... It does create new membranes on its eyes. Uh, maybe not burned off, but it does create new membranes on its eyes. Okay. 
It's something very like weird. that. It's very it weird. Uh, yeah. Uh, but there's actually a TCG card for Spide Ups, despite it being a terrible Pokemon in the video game. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, like, the card is actually, like, usable. People use it in decks, uh, the Spide Ups EX. Mm -hmm. uh, not good decks. I, I'm gonna say not good decks, but, like, fun we, decks. We, we call them Venomoth decks. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's, no, there's another deck at Twiff. I'm sure uh, there I is. mean, so, let me pull it up real quick. I don't know why. I don't remember where anything is, but here it is. There we go. Spide Ups has an EX card um, in the actually the intro to Scarlet and Violet set. Um, it Spide Ups EX is a stage one, obviously, of all from Tarantula. Um, it has the the big thing is its ability. Um, it does have a move for a grass and a, a colorless called Wire Hang for ninety damage plus, and this attack does thirty more damage for each retreat uh, energy and your opponent's active uh, active Pokemon's retreat cost, which does synergize with this ability, which is Trap Territory. And your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost is just one more. So a lot of people do like to play multiple of these spied ups on the bench to just increase your retreat cost insanely um, and to trap you in and to play control. And then you really hope they aren't playing Future Box. Yes. Uh, because Future Box ruins your day. Yeah, but yes. Uh, turns out Future Booster Energy just the, the makes your retreat cost zero. It doesn't didn't matter. It drop, though, in the last tournament? It oh, yeah. Zero. Oh, yeah. Is there well, everyone like... realized Charizard just has a good matchup into everything. Charizard does have a good matchup into everything. Charizard's very good right now. We'll see how it goes like, like as the time progresses. Like the next set might hopefully help. We can hope only hope. Uh, this we can hope it was... gets better and not worse. That that's yes. the hope. This format's very short, all things considered, right? So that is a benefit. Uh, it's only like two yeah. months. It's only like two months. And like it, gets, it goes away in like two weeks, three weeks or something. So it's... granted, like after NIIC, there's like no official events till Worlds, but you know. Then... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's still fine. short. fine. It's fine. But yeah, Spide Ups has like that card. That that's nice. Uh, it does have. Like, it has a cool card. shiny. The shiny guess... is cool. It's very pink. pink. It's like pink and blue instead. <laughs> the pink replaces the green on the Spide Ups. It's. And the red thread. The red thread is really cool on the track. It actually does look pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. You're right. You're right. Shiny Spide Ops is cool. There were a lot of bad shinies this this generation. So, you know, good shinies need a shout out. Looking at you, starters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The starters this gen sucked, right? Yeah. They they looked like they lost printer ink. The, the, the shiny starters looked like they lost the printer ink when they yeah, printed that. Like, you know, we, get, we go from like that. the gen 7 starters, which were like legit to whatever these were like masquerada was miserable it's like let's change yeah. the collar to purple was well, so why why i think it's slightly more purple shinies are also typically pretty bad spide ups works but like typically mm -hmm. purple shinies are just bad just just throwing it out there throwing it out there also how many people were disappointed when they discovered spide ups was the evolution of tarantula i was yeah i hope nobody was trying to use their tarantula in the story yeah, Tarantula uh, is such a cool it's such a cool concept for a Pokemon, and then it's just like, yeah, we just evolved into this giant spider that's bad. And it evolves at level 15. I hope it gets an evolution in the future. Uh Spide Ops uh, is one of those that could use it, I think. The Spide Ops sure. could have some potential if it could get like an evolution, right? Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Because conceptually that. it's like fine. It doesn't even get any like cool moves. It's like it gets a bunch of okay moves. I mean, Sticky Webs is always like a thing. Yeah, but it's like it's meh. It's like skitter smack, okay. Uh Trailblaze is okay, but you're base 35 speed anyway, so who cares? It'll uh, take a few of those. You yeah. you aren't gonna survive to make that speed matter. Electroweb, okay, that's fine. Shadow Claw is something. Toxic spikes, uh X scissor, yeah, I would hope. Yeah, it, it's nothing like super fancy or great to write home about. I'm so sorry, turn or spied offs. Is it is it in a tier? Does it even make it to ZU? It, it doesn't have any guides for ZU. No. I believe that. Oh, uh, Tarantula is in Little Cup. Tarantula is in Little Cup. Please tell me how it's used, Claude, and why it's not trash. Please, please, uh, webs. please. It does it have webs. webs. What's its that, base that's speed? Base 20, it's me. Uh, I was going to say, it doesn't matter. It's Little Cup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's... If you're well, not, you have, you have stakeout, so that's not. kind of fun. But oh, stakeout's I mean, fun too. Yeah, and you get knockoff, so it's knockoff. And little cup has spikes and it has webs, so it's a, you know, it can do stuff kind of. I love little cup. Little cup's one of my favorite tiers. 
It's just so good. It's so fun. Can we do draft league little cup? I was ah, that'd be fun. That's mm-hmm. actually probably the best little the best draft league there is is little cup draft league. Uh well, there's not much else to say about spy dogs. No, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. There's nothing else. We to We tried. Say. We tried. I tried to give yep. you something, buddy. Oh, it gets circle throw. That's something. Is All it? right. Well, uh, that's spied up, so I don't know what else to tell you. The card's useful. That's about it. Yeah, pretty much. They found uh, something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to kick it on over now, guys, to the mailbag. We will catch you on the flip flop. It's mail time. Sending your emails. Welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, as always, is the segment where you can send us an email at pucklepodcast at gmail.com and we'll tell you, we might read it on the show. We'll see. We typically have a prompt. Last week we asked you what you wanted in a Pokemon Legends Johto game. Uh, and some of you answered that question. Some of them made, some of you made up your own question, which is fine, actually. Like, especially if it's good content, I uh, will probably read it. We don't care. Yeah, honestly, yes. Uh, but yeah, always, this segment is brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! And as always, we'll give out the Green Tauros badge to anybody who sparks conversation. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. This week, our first email is going to come to us from Aki. And Sigma's got this one. Yeah. Hey, Buckle Pals. Hope you guys are doing all right. My idea for a Legends Johto game would look like us traveling to Hoenn. Yep, I am going to tell you about how Pokemon Legends Hoenn would look like instead, because I don't think I could come up with anything interesting about Johto, because I don't have any ideas that you guys and others wouldn't have come up with already, and I am not that fond of Johto. My idea... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. it's like, I mean, I, I can understand. Johto is not exciting if Kanto wasn't there. Uh, but yeah, my idea for Legends Hoenn game would be us being part of the Draconoid tribe and starting from the Draconoid village in Meteor Falls about the time in the 1800s when Western, the Western world had trade contact with Japan through Nagasaki. I would have wanted to have, a, have it take place during the 1600s, but I don't think that would be appropriate because of the Shimabara Rebellion. And Pokeballs would likely not have been invented. We could see the introduction. I I, I don't know how a game work Pokemon games works without Pokeballs, but continue. I digress. I mean, that's why they said they moved it up time wise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it Pokeball, it it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't think the timeline's that straight. No, I don't think so either. We could see the introduction of the Galarian Zigzagoon and see one of them adopt to become modern day Zigzagoon. Through the course of the game, all the plot could be us investigating different meteor crash sites, eventually leading us to using Rayquaza to fight Deoxys in a secret while the region, the tribe, is trying to engage with the foreign traders. The starter Pokemon would be Snivy, Quaxley, and Charmander, all which would evolve into Dragon-type Pokemon in their final evolution. Is it lazy? Maybe, but... Since we are part of the Draconoid clan, I think it's appropriate. That's fair. They are dragon-like. Mm-hmm. Except for Quaxley. Quaxley is just a duck, but we can make him a dragon duck, I believe. Uh, Superior could be more of a dragon and have it be based on Jimuguri the, or the forest rat snake. Charizard, whom I would just place in for Gen 1 nostalgia sales <laughs> and base it off the amber-colored salamander and... Have it not have wings, since it's not a flying type, to differentiate it from the two Charizards. <laughs> you might be asking why Quackwavel, because it's a male duck, is called a drake. Okay, okay. I, oh, that makes perfect sense now. I, I understand now. Okay. <laughs> drake is also a term associated with dragons. A dragon-looking duck would be a pretty sick design. Uh, okay, you you explained it to me. I'm I'm sold on it. It makes sense. There would be a few regional variants I would look, I would like. Regional variants of Toxicroak, which is a water poison type, and a regional variant of Noibird, which could be a normal dragon type. These are some of my ideas that I would like to see in a potential legendary Hoenn, or Legends Hoenn. With a lot of love, Aki. 
All right. Well, thank you for that, Aki. We appreciate your Legends Hoenn take. Uh, this next one is going to be from uh, Cinderace 11. Uh, it comes with images, which uh, unfortunately are terrible for a podcast audio only median. But uh, I'm all for Claude going ahead and reading the email and then I guess reading the images because they do play into the email's context as well. Okay. Well, they got uh, descriptions, dang. They have descriptions, yeah. They went pretty far on this, uh, and their MS Paint skills are solid. Uh, how's your shuckle, Faction Puckle? Uh, I hate, I don't know why I hate that. <laughs> I like that better than Howdy Do, Puckle Crew, okay? That's like, how do you do, Puckle Crew? How's your shuckle, Faction Puckle? I don't know why that bothered me, but it did. Anyways, um, let's pretend like that never happened. Um, anyways, uh... <clears throat> Cinderace 11 here, and I'm writing to give my thoughts on Legends Johto. Or, more accurately, a certain Pokemon that I'd like to see in Legends Johto. Ledian. Ugh, good old Ledian. It, w- it probably should be, at least. Look how they massacred my boy. Children, avert your eyes. It's the Iron Fist user with the base attack of... 35! 5! Wow. <laughs> That's wonderful. Boy, am I glad they made a Pokemon like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, he did not ask to be in this world. He needs help. Son, we will <laughs> fix you. And we we will try, at least. I'm not um, usually for giving huge power to Pokemon, but Ledian's an exception. Ledian deserves it. The huge power would give it, what, a base stat total of, or a base, stat, base attack of 70? Like, that's not bad. No. Anyways, it's, uh, first we need to look at, look, uh, first we need to give Ledian a new ability. Replace Early Bird with Prankster. This will allow both priority Tailwind and Screens. Next, buff all its stats by 25 except for Special Defense. Then teach it Follow Me. This will let it be a very viable supporter. Then we unlock its potential further by giving it an evolution. Or two, actually. Letting it use Eviolite and be stupid tanky. I don't think that would help it. But still, um... It wouldn't, but it'd be better than what we have now, right? (laughs) Anything is better than what we have now. Um, next is the evolutions, and these are what the two images are that were sent in. First, Lady Chador. Uh, it's stats file. Lady Chador. That's not how I read it, but you are correct in how it should be pronounced. Yeah, like a Luchador. Lady Chador. Lady Chador. You are correct. You are correct. Lady Chador. Lady Chador. Um, Chador. <laughs> basically, give it a hundred attack, eighty-five defense, sixty special attack, one hundred twenty special defense, one hundred five speed, and one hundred HP. And then just give it all the fighting. Give it a bunch of fighting moves and whatnot. Because it's a fighting type. It's a bug fighting type. Yeah, bug, exactly. Let, Make it bug fighting. Give it flying um, press. It needs it. Flying press. It should have flying press. Yeah. It should if it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, secondly, oh, they give a pronunciation for the second one. Lady Ladian. Oh, Lady Ladian. That's okay. Is a bug fairy type of prankster. Lady Ladian. And Queenly Majesty abilities. I made it that actually. That's pretty cool. It can be a priority blocker. However, it doesn't have follow me okay i don't think that make it any more broken um stat wise it's just it's more special attack based and has a lot of speed you know we get sent a lot of like pokemon fixes and they're usually like overpowered and busted i think this is the most balanced fix we've ever received for a pokemon ever i'm gonna be honest like in the in the past 16 years of me doing this show this is the most reasonable addition to the pokemon games that i've ever seen Probably need to drop the total BST down by like 40, but otherwise it's solid. It's very reasonable, though. This is very reasonable. It is within reason. It is within reason. I I yeah. don't disagree with that. 580 is just like usually where legendaries get their stats. Like 550. 550 is like Arcanine, right? So like. I think 530 yeah. is where uh, you be. Yeah, 540, 530. Something about 540 and below is usually where you're looking. Correct. Yeah. Anyways, um. Yeah, uh, after that, not too long rant about Ledian. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, I honestly think I would prefer Gen 6 as opposed to Gen 2. Um, uh, honestly, because I never got to play Gen 5 and Gen 6 due to me not owning a 3DS, but I digress. Uh, the game idea you guys have created sounds fun. I think the Land Ride Pokemon should be Piloswine or its evolution, purely because I want more of the way... I want I want more of the way the player looks like they're about to fall off when Karaidon runs. <laughs> well, thank you, Cinderace 11. Thank you. All right. That... All right. Our last email is going to be from Gigasaurus Games. Hello, Puckle Crew. To my slight surprise, I actually had strong opinions about some of the things that the Legends Johto game should have. So I decided to write in and give my thoughts on what some of the available Pokemon should be. 
First, I actually would prefer that Chimchar be given to Legends Kalos rather than Johto, because I worry that this would otherwise lead to Torchic being the starter in Kalos and make the question of Mega Blaziken awkward, especially if they continue the trend of regional final evolutions for the starters in Legends games. Actually, that's fine. Like, Mega, Slow Mega Slowbro exists and, like, Galarian Slowbro exists. It's fine. It just means, like, Colossian Blaziken can't do it. Uh, instead, I would actually give Johto Fennekin for the fire starter, and the final evolution could lean more into the Kitsune Trickster Fox aspects of the design. I, I'm okay with this, actually. I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. I, I... Um, perhaps making it Fire Fairy instead of Fire Psychic. Since Froki would then be a duplicate generation starter, I would make the water starter for Legends Johto Mudkip, and it could evolve into a new water grass swamper to draw on the other aspect of swamps, having an abundance of foliage. <coughs> the grass starter would probably end up being Turtwig, which could have perhaps evolve into a grass steel type since Gen 2 introduced the steel type. That would be cool, actually. Yeah, into that. As for new Pokemon, I think a really funny idea for the new Ursaluna equivalent ride Pokemon in Legends Johto would be an evolution of Octillery that finally creates a beta tank aspect of the design, so the player can just drive around in the tank and knock down barriers. The new myth mythical bird would probably be Aqu Aqua Quattro, but I think that a rock flying uh, Geo Quattro would be more interesting. Oh no! Well, we were talking about like you know how they in they brought in like an Avarice. They needed the fourth for the legendary birds. <laughs> Since Legend Z to A came up as well, I want to add my two cents about the timeline for the game. Based on the trailer, I'm actually very confident that it's in the past. Most of the arguments for the being in the future seem to assume that it looks like modern Kalos, but I think that's because the cities like Paris are just old cities. In contrast, the trailer starts with an old-style sketch rather than the tr Tron-esque diagrams, which I think re reflects the urban development plan being older. More importantly, in my opinion, is not a single image includes any shot of a vehicle while modern Lumio City has multiple taxis that the player can take. I like this defense. I agree with Gigasaurus here, actually. Yeah. I mean, I lean towards past, but I have no clue. I honestly do not. This may be stretching it, but I don't think that this is a future redevelopment of the city. As a last comment, I just want to add that the Bone Wars were uh, mostly an American phenomenon, not a British one, and that recent studies think Triceratops may be the hollow type for a species that includes several other specimens thought to be different species. As always, I greatly enjoyed the discussion, and I'm glad to see that Bosephus has returned to the show. Thank you for all the hard work you do you do in putting in putting into uh, making such a great podcast every week, and I hope you all have a good day. Gigasaurus Games. Well, thank you, Gigasaurus. We appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's every email. Honestly, I want to give Cinderace the badge. Yeah, so do I'm I. fine with that because Cinderace has provided the most realistic Pokemon creation that I have ever seen in Puckle. In the I past ten years, a, I think they're a little overpowered. I mean, I think they're a little too buffed on the stat side. They're slightly, they're, they're slightly, they're slightly, but they're not like they're not like overly done. So usually, people go well. People go. People will go to the six hundred base stat total. It's within a world. And Cinderace prevented themselves from going to the six hundred ba base stat total. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. I am impressed with how tame it was. None of the none of the lady in evolutions got like crazy moves or did their own signature moves. It was very done very nicely. One twenty nine base speed bug fairy. I mean, it's like Rabombi, but it actually has both. I was gonna say it's not that far like, from Rabombi. No, it's like a, give Rabombi more stats, and that's a little you know t scary. It's okay. It's okay. It didn't have sticky webs though. No, but it had like 120 base special defense and 100 something higher, like, you know, attack. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. It's okay. A it, 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 little scary. Just a little scary. It's okay. I, I appreciate the, the reasonableness and the art that came alongside. So we're, we're okay. You, Cinderace, you get this badge. Yes. Uh, but yeah, if you want to email us anytime uh, in the next week, you can let us know what you, you think the least or the worst move in all of Pokemon is at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. You can, of course, keep up with us throughout the week at PuckleDiscord.com or follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of those great places. Additionally, you can go over to our uh, Twitch at Twitch.tv slash The Puckle Podcast or our YouTube at YouTube.com slash Puckle Podcast. If you want to help support the show, you can go over to Trollandtoad.com and buy some cardboard just like I do by using code PucklePod5 at checkout and giving us a slight kickback. Um, additionally, you, and you get a 5% discount as well. Um, and, or you can go to Patreon at patreon.com slash puckle podcast. If you want to play Matt, those things are coming to Patreon, uh, in June. So you got to join now. They look so good. You got to join now. Oh yeah. Oh, you got them. Yeah, that's right. You got them. 
I got them, and they are incredible. They actually look really good. They actually do look really good. I was impressed when I got mine. So, uh, Claude and I have prototypes, so <laughs> they, they look so good. Because my wife designed it, so I got a free prototype. Uh, yeah, they, they look actually very good. Uh, very, very good. They are incredible. Like, I did not expect them to turn out as well as they did. They, they look so sharp, actually. Like, they look really good. Interesting. One of mine is, uh, actually, as I look at one of mine right now, it has, uh, it was, like, printed off. Yeah, I noticed that on mine, too. I'm going to fix that when in the final product. A couple of print lines on the side, on the top. I'm going to fix this in the final product, and we're going to make sure it's good. Uh, I'm just going to oversize it a little bit. I'm going to oversize it. Don't worry about it. All right, that's fine. We'll oversize it. No big, no biggie. But yeah, it's very exciting. But it looks incredible, otherwise. It's very exciting. So yeah, with that said, guys, uh, I, I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been our Sigma. And I've been Claude Nine. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.